Hi guys, welcome to this week's plumberparts.co.uk video. Today I'm going to take the mystery out of balancing your radiators and getting every radiator hot in your house by installing these Rasby 2s from Danfoss and using their new balancing app and a little widget in here to get your heating system working properly. We're going to talk about why balancing a heating system is so important. We'll unbox these radiator balancing valves from Danfoss, have a look at how they work, install them on every radiator in my own home, and then use the wicked Danfoss installer app to balance all the radiators properly for each room or radiator size, and to save money by making sure your condensing boiler is always efficient. So join us for this week's video, guys. Watch all the way to the end. There should be a fantastic song selected by the AL Army. If you want to get involved with that, click the join button. All the tools that I use in this video, you'll be able to find on our Amazon store as well. Let's get on with the video, guys. Remember to hold chat. Learn more about radiator valves, radiators, heating systems, plumbing, and more in our interactive house. Links below. So before we continue with the video, I think it's a good idea that we describe why balancing a heating system is important. Now I've covered this in previous videos, but it's always good to have a quick recap. So let's just see it like this. We've got 10 radiators in a house. Usually on most heating systems, we've got one pump delivering hot water flow to all of those radiators. Now, if one radiator is taking more flow because it's not balanced and it's fully open and some of the other radiators are a bit shut or they're a bit open, we're gonna end up with an unbalanced heating system. That means that some radiators are being starved of flow. They won't get hot enough. You'll find that other radiators are baking hot and you've just got a system that isn't working properly, isn't working right and isn't happy. In the past, what we've done is we've used the lock shield end of a radiator to strangle the flow to that radiator and do that to all the other radiators in the house to make sure that the radiator is as balanced as we can get it. That isn't the perfect way of doing it because we're kind of just giving it a crack open and all that sort of stuff. It's a little bit Heath Robinson, I think maybe is the best way of putting it. Don't get me wrong, it's worked for me many times in the past, but I'm pleased to say now that we've got something coming out from Danfoss that's gonna be able to allow us to say, this is how big the radiator is, and this is the type of radiator, and this therefore is how much flow we're going to need using a proper metered scale, all within one TRV body to make sure that it's properly balanced. The other reason it's really important to balance a heating system is because that means we can reduce the return pressure going back to the boiler, which means that the boiler will condense more, which means that your customer or yourself, if you're doing this on your own house, will save more money on your heating system. I don't wanna go into it, but latent heat extraction on condensing boilers is greater than it is a standard boiler therefore you have lower flue temperatures lower hot air going out to atmosphere never to be returned and regained ever again and then you can have a nice running system efficient balanced pump speeds are lower all that sort of stuff so that's why it's really important to balance a heating system and that's also how you recognize that it may need balancing in the first place so before we go to my house let's have a look at one of these beasts here and then we'll go to my house itself we'll install these on every radiator i'll show you some where i just do a straight swap install which is quite easy to do but i'll also show you how to do a tail change as well which you know is probably going to be the more likely change you get if you're a proper plumber you'll know how to do straight swaps without changing the tails over a little bit of skullduggery in the world of plumbing is needed to do that but hopefully in this video you'll not only learn how these work but also we'll get to change the TRV together have a little chat about how that all works get the system balanced and running properly and efficiently let's get going guys oh yeah so what do you get inside the box when you buy one of these Rasby 2 dynamic radiator packs hey eh? you've got quite a bit in here because this has got the lock shield and the TRV in here as well so we've got a standard Danfoss TRV head that loads of you have seen over the years. Then we've got a set of tails, and they always do really good tails, these guys. I mean, you saw me fit the um, bathroom one in our earlier video where I'm doing the bathroom renovation, where I've got the pipes coming up. And they always have little nicks in them, so you can, it, so your PTFE or your Loctite or whatever you use to seal your threads up doesn't slip, so that's nice. Then we've got our lock shield here, and inside the lock shield head you just have a little iron key on there. And what we're going to do for this job, we're going to leave every one of these fully open this time, which just feels foreign, I know, but you just got to get used to doing it. And then we've got our TRV body updated and ready for us to do the balancing on here as well. So let's have a closer look at this. So at the moment, we can just use this, while it's got this head on like this, as a standard, just 
on and off valve. But that's really only for while you're doing an install on a job. So we've got a standard pin at the top. The new piece that you need to really take notice of is this green collar on here and also this little arrow on here. Currently this is set to N. Now N is when we're effectively not using any of the balancing features of this valve. But we can then start to change the amount of flow that comes through this valve by twisting the green piece on here so it correlates with the numbers on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we line those numbers up with this little arrow here. So if I had it set like this, that would be set to seven. If I set it round like so, that would be set to one. The great thing about this is that means as an engineer or as an installer or as a DIYer, we can go into someone's house, set the balance that we need to using the app, which I'll show you in a minute, and then pop the head on, cover it all up, and that means then that no one will play around with it and change your settings. So now what we do, and you can do this before you get on the job, and actually the great thing is, if you fit similar radiators throughout the house, which most people do do, you can put all the radiators and input them into this app so it's all ready to go. So what we do, we go to the app store, type in Danfoss installer, and there you go, the installer app is there. We can open that now, and then we've got our main dashboard here, we've got radiator presetting, flow pressure calculations, timer replacement, hydronic balancing tools, to name but a few. But today we're going to be looking at just the radiator presetting bit. Download this app yourself and have a good look around it. There's loads to see. So now I've got the app installed. Now I know where the radiator presetting bit is. Before I do loads of presetting, what I'm going to do is go to the house, get these installed, and then go through and preset each radiator one at a time. What's a plumber parts video without a bicep curl? This time with the left. Let's do it. Oh. So then, I've done multiple videos on plumber parts on how to drain down your heating system, whether it's pressurized, whether it's unvented. Whoa, 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 but before we do that, turn every radiator off on the TRV, turn the heating system on, then go to each radiator, open the TRV up, and then mark which side is the flow. I usually use a bit of tape. You'll thank me for this later in the job. But let's just go through a quick checklist that you should do and I'll leave links to those videos in the description below as well. So here's a little bit of a checklist for you. Number one, make sure that the boiler is turned off, the pump is turned off, and the heating system is electrically isolated. Usually you'll find a switch next to a time clock and stuff like that, but if you want to, you can switch the boiler off on the front, and also, if you can, pull the lead out of the bottom of your pump, or just leave it between speeds. That's often a little trick that we use in the plumbing trade. Next thing you want to do is make sure that the two port and the three port valves are latched open. Once you've done that, attach a hose to the lowest point, and that for us here is that little drain off just down there that you've seen me use in Plumber Pots videos before. Open that up, we'll start draining the system down, and then we can go in, open all the radiator vents from the top floor, down to the bottom floor, allowing air into the system. Once water is not coming out of the pipe anymore, then you're ready to do the next bit. So then, whilst we're waiting for everything to drain down, what I'm going to do is go over to the app that I installed earlier on, the Danfoss Installer app. I'm going to go to Radiator Presetting. Now, at the moment, we've got it set, so we've got a flow temperature of 70 degrees and a return temperature of 55, which should be just about right for a lovely bit of condensing. The differential pressure is set at 10 kPa, which is basically a way of knowing the pressure that's being given out by the pump. Now, a lot of us have modulating pumps. That means the pressure is going to go up and down. The differential pressure is going to be different at certain times. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that on 10 because that's the lowest setting that we can have. And that then means that the radiators will be expecting the least amount of flow to get to them. But it still means that these valves will work perfectly fine. So once I've done that, I say, right, there we go. That's the properties I want. Press next up here. Choose the valve type. I've got the valve here. That's the RAS B2 dynamic radiator pack. So I'll pop that on. The sensor is this one here, the RAS C2, which closes, usually takes about five minutes to close once it's got up to temperature. So it's got a nice quick sort of close time on it. The radiator type, it is a panel radiator and it does have convecting fins in it. So I'm gonna say, right, yeah, it's a panel. At this point, we can also say heat requirement per room and we can also do heat emission per radiator, but I don't tend to do that. What I'm gonna be doing is going panel, then we've got the height, length and type of radiator. I'll measure that in a sec with my trusty beast. But then we've also got type. Now this is when you need to know the types of radiator out there. I've got a little diagram just here next to us here. I'm gonna say this is a double panel single convector because it doesn't have the type fins that you'd usually get on a double panel convector radiator. So that means it's gonna be a type 21. The height for this is a 600. Yeah, 600 and it is 1100 wide. 
So then we can see the valve type, the valve sensor, the flow temperature, the return temperature we're going to get, and the differential pressure on that. We've got a heat emission now of 1.2 kilowatts or 1,215 watts. We're going to get about 70 litres per hour of calculated flow. And the presetting, which is the important number at the bottom, is 6.5. So what could I do now? Before we've even put this on the radiator, I can say, right, it's set on N at the moment, but I'm going to bring that round so that marries up to 6.5 just there and there we go that's now preset ready to go on now remember what i said these radiator valves are not universal so we've got an arrow on the side that denotes the flow that needs to go through and like i just said earlier on in the video we've now gone around before we did anything and we ran the heating system to see where the flow and the returns are on each radiator and we've marked all of them with a little bit of tape i always mark with a bit of tape because you can just pull it off and now we've got the simple job and we're just going to do a full changeover on this radiator here so let's get it on so I'm going to do a full change on this one. So we actually change the tails on this. And in a way that will teach you straight away as well how to do this on new radiators. The good thing about this system is say you're going to a house where you're fitting 10 new radiators. Well, you already know the sizes of the radiators. You've already got 10 TRVs in the van that you've bought already. So why don't you just input them into the app now and get it all set up like that. So you can turn up to the job and your radiators are already balanced before they've even been hung on the wall. Can you believe that? How cool would that be? So taking over an old radiator valve can be quite difficult, but you've got to know what you're doing. So we take the old radiator valve off by slacking off the two nuts. As you can see, I've removed the olive as well. I've put the new spigot in that I've got my lovely bit of Loctite on, and then I've popped some jointing compound on the pipe itself and also on the olives and inside the fitting itself. This will allow it to do up nice and smoothly and ensure there's no leaks. Once you've done that, you can pop the head on and just use the collar to screw that down nicely, making sure that the indicator is facing the user. At the other end, the radiator this is an even easier job because this time i'm not changing the radiator insert i thought you'd like to see that also once you finish with that just take the cap off the top and using an allen key make sure that the lock shield end is fully open and by that i mean you wind it all the way open and then just give it a tiny quarter of a turn closed again just to avoid any seizing in the future right just put that bum back in so yeah, we've got our TRV on here now, and that's balanced already. All I've done is pop the lock shield on that end. I wanted to show you there a way of changing these over without taking the tails out, which is a, usually, I mean, it's usually the best way because if you start trying to pull around old tails, taking the old tails out, putting new tails in, you often end up with pipes in different positions. And you often, if you haven't got any flex in the pipe like we did there, you saw I had to cut a little bit off the top of the 15 mil just to get that on. So that can be a bit of an issue. But we've left that lock shield completely open. The bung is back on at the top of the radiator. This radiator is done. What I want to talk to you about very quickly is the settings for the TRV. Oh my God, people get this wrong all the time. People seem to think that thermostatic radiator valves are sensing for the water temperature within the radiator. No. They are sensing for air temperature within the room. So if you go into a room that's hot and the radiator's hot and the thermostatic TRV is turned to two, leave it alone. Don't turn it up. Um, in a bedroom, you want it set on around two. If you like a cool bedroom, that'd be about sort of 18 degrees. In a living room like this one here, where we are at the moment, you want to set it to about three. And in a bathroom, set it to four. If you want it on all of the time, leave it on to what I call play mode, just constant. Uh, if you want frost protection because you're going on holiday, leave it on the frost stat and then it will just keep the house so it doesn't get so cold that it freezes or that particular radiator. So that's how that is. Now I'm going to leave this open now because when I've done a full system changeover, when I've done all the radiator valves in here, we're going to liven up the whole system and get it all working. Right then, so here we obviously have a much smaller radiator, don't we? So our setting for our valve is going to be completely different. Look, the black tag I've just popped on here, there's our flow. So why don't I very quickly just get this measured up and popped in to our application. So I'm going to go into here, I'm going to start a new calculation, radiator preset, the same again. We know we're using a RAS B2, and we've got ourselves a little panel rad. It's going to be another 21 again. This time our width and our size is 400 by 400. So 400 by 400. So that means the presetting for this now is 3.5. So I can open up one of these boxes with our valve in it. And if I want to right now, I can set that down to 3.5 and then that's ready to go on. 
All I need to do now is just swap these two over. That's it, how easy is that? So now you can see, because I've already done one radiator before, I'm now not gonna change the spigots over anymore. And also you can see my little tag on there, so I now know that the flow is coming in from this end. So I'm gonna pop my new TRV on this end and then pop to the other end of the radiator, whip off that old TRV and turn that into my lock shield. Again, I will open the lock shield fully and then give it a quarter of a turn closed to avoid any seizing. So then there we go, another one done. Now I'm just gonna go and do the rest throughout the house. Believe me, you don't want to watch it, it takes ages, but I think you've got the idea of now how to measure your radiator, put that into the app, and then find out what the presetting should be. There's also another really cool function on the Danfoss installer app, and that is the project function. So you can go in there, add a customer, I'm gonna put in plumber parts, and my last name is gonna be Big G, of course. Then you can add in things like email, phone, customer's company, street address, street number, postcode, stuff like that. You can save that, and then go into the client's folder, and then add a project. From here, we can call the project a new name, or just use the client's name. This time we're doing radiator heating, so we're gonna create that. Now we can add different rooms to the project, i.e. the house. So for demonstration, let's add the kitchen. Pop a radiator in, it's gonna have the RAS B2 valve on there. We're gonna put a panel radiator on. It's gonna be 600 high by a whopping 2000 and we're gonna keep it as a type 10. So there we go, there's our first radiator. If we click duplicate, we can duplicate the room if it's got the same radiator in it and just rename the room to living room. I now add a few more rooms with a few different radiator sizes. And there we go, once we're at the end of that, we can print a whole sheet out showing all our presets Imagine printing that out and giving that to your customer. They're gonna think, wow, this guy or gal knows exactly what they're doing. Just so you know, while all this was going on, Big G was doing this on the bed next to me. Meow. Right then, so there we go. Every radiator in the house is now done. Oh my God. Now, one thing I will say is if you've got a towel rail, sometimes you don't wanna put a thermostatic radiator valve on a towel rail, and that is your personal preference. What I'd do, if that was the case, is I'd get all the other radiators working, get the heating system turned back on, and leave that towel rail shut, and then just when everything's like fully up to temperature and running, just give the lock shield a crack open. Or you could use a straight chrome TRV and leave that fully open. So I've also filled up the heating system because like I said at the start of the video, I've done this so many times before, I didn't want to bore you by showing me turn all the valves off, closing all the bleeds, making sure all the TRVs are fully open, making sure all the lock shields are fully open, then filling the heating system up and then bleeding it out and then turning everything on. I will inhibit this heating system, but that will be after this video. I don't want to have to show you that either. What I want to show you now is using this thermal camera, whether we get those nice flow and return temperatures that we were looking for when we were setting this up. Right then, so I've just turned this beast on. The system has been on a little bit already, so this just should get really nice and hot, nice and quick. So I don't know if you can see that down there. We've got 40 degree water coming in now. So it's gonna start to get nice and hot. And as you can see, my TRV is fully open as well. Right, so I've set this little beast here, this thermal camera, so we can actually just watch this radiator get hot in quick time and hopefully see that we're getting the temperatures that are required. I love doing this sort of thing, yeah. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever filmed in my whole life. Oh man, that is so cool. Look at that heating up, wicked. So then guys, there's a great indication there that the radiator is getting really, really nice and hot. You can see that we've got a beautiful temperature up here. You know, we're getting 64 degrees up here and all that. So let me just undo this for a sec. Hello. So there we go, we've got a radiator now with a feed at the top of a lovely about 68 degrees and just slowly climbing up still. If I just go down and have a look down here. Whoa, <laughs> look at that. Bang on 50 degrees. Now that there is a little bit of tape that I've put around the copper pipe because sometimes thermal cameras struggle to see really accurate temperatures if it's on a shiny type surface. If you look, look exactly what we've got there. That is the return pipe temperature and that is 50 degrees. So we've got 70 degrees up the top here. If I find that I'm not getting quite the return I like, I can just tweak that preset a bit, but really I'm completely happy with this. Now I'm gonna go around and check every other radiator in the house. So then guys, there you go. That's how you install one of these lovely little valves. That's what you get in the box when you buy one. But that's also how you can balance your heating system from one end automatically using technology and an app that will make sure that you get not only the right flow and return temperatures, but you'll also get beautiful condensing 
energy saving boilers, oh yeah, but you'll also make sure your customer is getting exactly the right amount of water to make sure that they can heat their room up so it's lovely and warm. Think of that. Another little thing about this that I really like is the fact that your balancing side is almost hidden. There's nothing worse than having a customer that fiddles about with your balancing after you've left. It drives me completely crazy. So it's a really, really good product. Really, really like it. It's very, very simple to do. As you've seen, there are a few other little bits and pieces you can do using the app. You can buy these in our Amazon store, so make sure you click over there and get them. Make sure you get the right one. Make sure that it's the dynamic radiator valve, and you'll know that because it will not be universal. So only have the one-way flow. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. I hope you found out and learned a little bit about how to get your heating system working properly, how to make sure that every radiator is working properly. I can hear the beautiful dynamic thermostatic music of Plumber Parts songs selected by the Ale Army Massive in the last Thursday night live stream, just fading in now as we speak. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Hit the subscribe button. Please comment below. There's loads of people in the Plumber Parts community ready and waiting to help you in the comment section. And remember to hold tight as well. I think the too. Thanks very much for watching. See you what later. Is balance without you? It's nothing to balance the radiator to And the little pixies going down and down and down in their little house were warm all night long thanks to the balanced radiators of Danfoss.